Right, good morning everyone. Now, uh, I've let these dry overnight. Um, I do have to glue that in, of course. But they turned out really well. I've got to glaze them yet. And they do look like toadstools, mushrooms, whatever you want to call them. Now, I know this one's cracked and everything, but that's fine. That's what mushrooms look like. And I could have painted them a different colour. I've got to finish that off. Here's another one. So they look really nice, don't they? Make sure they're securely glued in when I do that. And what I'm going to do, though, is to leave them out. Because the in see how that's not dry in there? Well, they're going to have to be left a couple of days too dry. And then uh, I'll fix some glue in and push them back in. In fact, I can do that now. Where's my glue? Uh, but what I want to show you is um, I've got these in. Now, I'm, sat I'm putting these on the shop and you get a pack of 20. So that's a lot. So I'm just going to go through these with you now. These are for you, uh, the junk journals, whatever you want to use them for. We do put them in the junk journals as well. So I'm just showing you them. You get so many like this, which are like, uh, you know, receipts and whatnot. They will all differ. But they'll be, this, you know, you'll get ten of those and then you get ten script. So if you bought two patch, you probably would get two, uh, 40 different ones altogether. They're just playing on the back. But they're great. I love reading them. <laughs> Some of the writing was absolutely beautiful. I wish they'd go back to teaching it. <coughs> Excuse me. Just love the way they write. My dearest mother. It's just some of it you can read really quickly, and then some of it you have to work it out. Uh, catch the word. Still looking forward to a. It just makes me wonder who's who's. Um, letters they took them from and you can see that they'd written on the opposite side although this is just a copy you see but it looks like they'd written on the other side as well the weather up here is wet and cold got wet through coming in today <laughs> i just loved them oh god i couldn't read that the dry you know when handwriting used to be nice and fun to do? You used to love receiving mail. Now look at it, it's quick email. Done. And it's not as personal anymore. And we're not going to have anything like this for future generations. Not that we'll be interested in it anyway, but... Oh my God. But you're getting ten of each. So you're getting uh, twenty in total. And they'll be up on the shop shortly. So you've got those. Anyway, I was just looking at this and they really do need to be dried out. But I am going to glue them ready. So I'm going to use my E6000. And I just pour that in. When it's all dried out.
Right, I'm just going to take the patina. Wow, that's wet because I'm not fussed about it. Use the right brush for it, I think. That's it. There's just a touch left of that colour. I don't need to do any more than that to it. Um, but then we've got the cap, which we have to do that. So let me just get on and do that one. We just It kind of like warms it up so you can move it about. So we just put that in there and we squash that out. Now, what I didn't show on the video yesterday, uh, because for some reason, I don't know, my camera's playing, not my camera, it's the programming I'm using is just playing up and I don't know, there's such a lot happening, you know, I keep getting people trying to hack into my account, they're just the assholes basically, and we know that. So, what I'm going to do is to take that out. Take the glue, spread that around. So this is the thing I didn't show you yesterday. And then we just pop that back in and press that in. And then when that's dried, that will stick. You must give it a day or two to dry though. And how to get that on there. That's it. And then we use our what I call my slicer. Like that. And that is how I do mine. And the thing is, you find a way that suits you. So, while we're waiting for those to dry, um, I'm just going to pop that over there, out of the way. Lean it up onto something so that it's uh, safe. Now, what I'm going to do is... I'm. While these are drying as well, I'm going to attach some of these little bobbles. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue. That should be enough. We'll leave that for a minute. And I'm just going to use um, a small brush. Put the glue on. Put a dab of glue. Like that. And then I'm going to Pick up and pop that on.
Well, as soon as I've done the red ones, I changed my mind. I don't want the spots on the red ones. After looking at them all, um, I know the red ones normally have the spots on, but I like them better on the brown ones. So I'm just scraping this off and we're going to correct. It, well, it does need another coat of paint anyway. So I'm just going to do these. <clears throat> you just peel them off and then that will scrape away. So I don't need them. They are only bits of clay that were left. So just a minute. Just going to lift my mat over towards my hands so I can get rid of them easy enough. I'm going to have to clean my mat off. I don't need to save them. I can make plenty of them. Right, so what I'm going to do now is clean my brushes. Now what I used, let me just move those to them. They look quite cute, don't they? I like them. See? Quite cute. And I think they'll look better when they're actually on the project. So I've got these. Now the ones I used, like I said yesterday, was this one, which is the Lumiere. And I used the Russet. But I also used the Copper in the Pentart um, Antique Paste. Now, where's my gold? Just bear with There we are. I've got my gold here. Right, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I love doing stuff like this. I'm going to take a dobber, I think. Now, I'm using Inca Gold by Viva, and it is a paste, but you can use it as a paint as well. You don't have to keep it as a paste. I'm putting enough on and what I'm going to do is go around the edge and it will stand out and I have to do this before I put the um, varnish on. I'm just going to push that one in a little bit more. That's it. Right, so I've done that. Another job done. But now what I need to do is I need to take my glaze, which is Decapatch. Oh, no, I'm not going to use that one, I don't think. 
here. Is it this? No, I've got it. I know where it is. I've just spotted it. I bought a new one. Well, a while ago. Now, I'm not going to glaze the tops until I've done the stem and the underneath. Oh, there we go. Look, see how it's not been used for a while. And it is sad that they go like that. Because you lose quite a bit. Ugh. Oh, God. But that's what happens. I'm going to use my uh, cloth. I wipe the excess off. Right, so, dobber out of the way. Um, I'm going to take, where's my flat brush? This flat brush. Where is it? This one, I think. That one. And what we're going to do, carefully glaze the underneath. Now you can use PVA glue, whatever you want to do on yours. That's fine. That's going to give that a really nice shine. You know when you're frying mushrooms and you get that glaze on them underneath, um, on the bottom section, this is what it should help them look like. But it'll protect it as well. See, that still needs poking in there a little bit. And then our last one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, with seven mushrooms. Just pop the lid back on there. I'm just wondering if I can, I can actually do some of this stalks. Look, lost a little bobble. Doesn't matter, we can glue it on again. And this will also protect them. Plus, I can also go in and recolour them if I have to. But that will protect them. Right, so that's how they are. They will dry clear. And, yeah, I like them. Next thing we're going to do is to pop them onto whatever base I'm going to choose for them and then colour the uh, to varnish the stems. And just look at that. Okay, okay, I shall be back um, with part four. Right, that's it for now, and uh, I will be back with part four, and we will be doing the base. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye for now.